Okay, so today's question is on air compressors. What's the deal with that little valve that is on the bottom of the air compressor? What is it for? Um, some people, when, when I first uh, start talking to them about air compressors, and I'll ask them just to kind of see if they know, some people will say, oh, well, that's where you can hook in another tool. Eh, no, not so much. Uh, the reason that that uh, little valve is there is actually to drain water. Okay, now, where the hell does water come from? Time for a little bit of physics. So if you think back to high school, or uh, you know, college, if you happen to take you know, chemistry or physics or something, um, you might have learned about the ideal gas law. The ideal gas law basically says, um, it says a couple things. Let me back up a little bit. First off, just imagine air, okay? Right in front of you, there's the air in front of you. That has uh, moisture in it, okay? Now, what's gonna happen when you start compressing all of that air, okay? All those little particles of water, they're going to start forming bigger and bigger particles of water until finally you have like raindrops, all right, and then those drops are going to accumulate in the bottom of your air compressor, all right, and that's what that little drain valve is for. It releases that air or uh, that, uh, that water that is accumulated inside. Now, why is it important to release the water? A couple of reasons. One, it's going to be extra wear and tear on your tools and on your air compressor because that water is just sitting in there. It's just it's doing nothing but causing rust and corrosion. Um, obviously, you know, a, a, a sealed container that is pressurized to, you know, 120 pounds per square inch, if that thing decides to blow, that's not going to be a good day for you. So, it is vitally important that you periodically drain that. Alright, all you do is once the air, you know, air pressure gets, gets built up, you just release that little valve on the back and it's just going to be squirting out the water in the air. And uh, your air compressor obviously might kick on again because it's losing pressure, but it's draining all that water out of there. All right. The other reason is on your tools. Um, we all know how much uh, air tools can cost. Um, you might get some "quote unquote" free when you purchase the air compressor, um, but still, those obviously aren't free. You're still paying for them, so you know you want to take care of these things. So if you get extra moisture that's come in from the, the air compressor into your line or you know, through the regulator, through your line, and then actually into the tool itself, you could have some more uh, corrosion problems, wear and tear, and all that stuff. And you could prematurely wear the, the nail gun that you're using or the standard that you're using or the impact wrench or you know whatever that you happen to uh, uh, hook up into this thing. Something else is, that is really, really important, kind of this is where the, uh, the ideal gas law comes into play, what happens when you start to compress that air? All right. Obviously, like we discussed, the the water molecules start forming into drops. But what happens to the temperature when you start to compress that air down? Well, when when the the pressure goes up, so it is the temperature. Okay. So you have all this really, really hot air that is trapped inside this container, and it's got water in the bottom. Well, over time, that heat just tends to dissipate. Okay. So it's not going to stay, you know, superheated. Um, inside your air compressor forever, it's obviously just going to flash off and eventually it's going to cool down and to assume your room temperature or garage temperature, whatever. As soon as that pressure is released, that temperature, or, or as soon as the pressure is released, that temperature is going to go down even further, okay? So if you happen to be using a spray gun, all right, you're doing some, uh, you know, finishing up a project or you're painting inside a house or whatever and you're using a pneumatic sprayer, what happens is as soon as that pressure goes down, the temperature is going down. Now, what happens when hot air and cold air mix? You have moisture, okay? Now, this is vitally important when you're trying to do some painting. If you already have air, um, or if you already have water inside your compressor, and that water is coming out through your spray gun, you automatically are pretty much ruining your project, okay? Mixed into that, if you're in a very, very, you know, high humidity area, as soon as you start spraying, what's happening? You have hot and cold air meeting, so it's pulling the moisture out of the air and forming little droplets all over the side of your project, okay? So if you can kind of control your spray environment a little bit better, um, try to, you know, paint where uh, hopefully you can control the humidity a little bit better, maybe inside air conditioning garage, inside house or, you know, inside a, a spray booth or something, that can help. Um, other times, you, just, you, know, you obviously can't avoid it. If you're out doing a deck or a fence or something, um, you know, if you're in an apartment complex, you can only do so much. Um, but anyway, that's uh, just a couple things to keep in mind on uh, why it is vitally important 
that you drain that air compressor. All right, guys. Questions, comments, concerns, complaints, whines, bitches, moans, and groans, please leave them below. Talk to you next time.